These are the top 10 mistakes I wish someone would have told me about when I started trading. Stick to this video. Trust me, this will save your life if you're a new trader. I wish someone had told me about this when I started trading, but no one did. I would tell you, and Loki approved this message. This is my new Shiva. Let's put him down. Let's get to this video right now. Mistake number one, very common mistake. I think we all make it without thinking about it, without thinking it's a mistake. It's very normalized when you start. Using straight lines instead of using candlesticks. I'm gonna tell you why. You can't really see patterns properly. You're just looking at a line moving up and down and you don't really know where it's going, right? You can see it's going up, but you don't know if something is cooking in the background and then all of a sudden your stock drops or either pumps all the way up. You don't know what's gonna happen. You can't really see trends properly. You know, there's so many trends that candlesticks really help you uh, see in advance. For example, these are some of the candlesticks. Uh, I'm gonna mention some of them as I scroll through this webpage. Uh, you have the inverse hammer, you have the regular hammer, um, you have the morning star. Uh, morning star is a very nice one that I typically like to see when a stock has been falling. And then once I see uh, this forming, I kind of, you know, have an idea that, oh, this could probably start reversing to the upside. And then there's more. I'm gonna scroll slowly here so you can see a few of them. But if you are more interested in this subject, uh, click on this uh, link. It, it, you know, there's a description there. For now, we're gonna move on. When you trade with uh, regular straight lines, it's like you're trading blindly, right? You don't really know what's gonna happen. You're just putting your money in there, hoping that whatever you're trying to do uh, works. I understand when I started in Robinhood, I don't think they had good candlesticks, if at all. Uh, so when I switched to a better trading platform is when I actually uh, started doing way better. And I'm gonna tell you about this platform pretty soon in the video. Very big one here. Number two, trading without an in and out plan. So for a few of the mistakes, I'm going to be using one of the worst trades I made when I started, this was back in 2020, that I, I wish I had someone to guide me through this trade, but I did lose a lot of money for my account size. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the screen here, but pretty much I bought Genius Brands. <laughs> You'll see right here on the screen. Um, and I'm looking at my phone here because I'm looking at uh, the numbers, but at first I bought it at 1018, right? This was a pump and dump, pretty much. And then I kept on buying more at 1034, and then 1096 is, uh, I bought a lot of shares there, I think 750 or so. And then around 9.74, it started dropping again. I bought, you know, $900 worth of stocks, right? Thinking it was gonna, it was averaging down, right? I didn't have an in and out plan. Now I want you to pay attention to this, right? Uh, this line that says sell right here, the average, I was, I actually had a sell order for uh, selling all of the shares at $11 and I would have made $400 in profit. Now back then that would have been a lot for me, you know, as I was just starting out. $400, that would have been a good um, in and out, quick money. I just go in and out, made 400 bucks and I'm out. I put a sell and I said to Weeble, sell all of my stocks at $11 average. And when I saw that it started going up, I was like, I canceled it. I was like, no, 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 no. I need to get more money, right? If I had sold at 11, I would have made 400 bucks. But I was like, no, this is gonna go to 20. That was my thinking. This is gonna go to 20. It went from like, I don't remember, but 60 cents all the way up to 1096. I could, that could have been, that was a big, big uh, pump. And I thought, oh, it's gonna double. <laughs> How crazy it was. In reality, this stock went all the way up to 11.73 though. So, you know, after that, you probably know the story. I can talk about this in another video, but it just crashed. Mistake number three, trading without preparation, uh, without a reason to trade, without a purpose, without technical analysis, without any event happening. You're just trading. For example, you could be trading with preparation 
for earnings, right? You're, okay, I'm gonna buy this stock and I'm thinking the earnings are gonna be great. I'm gonna make some profit on a swing trade, meaning you buy today and maybe in a few days you sell. Maybe they will miss earnings, maybe something's gonna happen in this other industry that will affect this industry. So, you know, trading with a purpose, right? Trading because, you know, just putting your money somewhere just because you need to, you know? You can lose a lot of money doing that. Mistake number four, trading pump and dumps. Just like the example that we were looking at, right? Genius Brands. That one was clearly a pump and dump. I had no training for it. As you could see, the stock went up thousands, I think how much percentage wise it went up from like cents all the way up to 11, right? That was clearly a pump and dump. And then it dropped all the way down back to the same level as it was. Currently is around 60 cents or 70 cents, I don't know. And if you're looking at the number down there, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened afterwards, right? So um, I ended up not selling, I, I, I didn't sell. And, and then when I finally sold, I lost about $8,300 I lost in total after I sold it, right? So instead of making 400 bucks, I ended up losing 8,000 bucks. My mistake was getting caught in a pump and dump without training. I want you to look at them when they're being traded and analyze it and then just say in your head, okay, I would buy here and I would sell here and see how you do without actually doing it. You can also paper trade and then train that way. Webull actually has a paper trading platform where you can train as if you were trading. So I would suggest doing that, analyzing those until you have proper training, but I would stay away from pump and dumps if you're a new trader. Trading options, this is very much uh, self-explanatory. Similar to pump and dumps, if you do not have training, do not trade options. It's very difficult. It, trading options, it's a whole different beast. You have so many different things going on. For example, there's something called the Ivy Crush. Let's say you bought an option and the stock price goes up, but your option doesn't even move. And sometimes it goes down. That's because the volatility has decreased due to the factors that I don't even know. I'm not an expert in options. So you can make quick money, fast. I remember I took an account from $18,000 to 37 in like three days with options. But then I also lost a lot of that money quickly. But trading options without proper training, without being an advanced trader, I do not recommend that as a new trader, unless you're a degenerate and you wanna bet, then that's a good way to bet. But in reality, it's a good it's a good way to lose all of your money very quickly. I would stay away from that. So before we continue, I just wanna say, if you wanna sign up for Webull and have the ability to look at nice charts, technical analysis, I actually do technical analysis when I trade stocks and I'm gonna leave a link in the description, maybe in the comments for you to uh, click on it and sign up for a new account. I think they always have promotions where they give you some stocks just for signing up with my referral code or something. It's not complicated. It's a good jump from Robin Hood, beginner, to now you know what you're doing, Webull. Very beautiful platform. The user interface is amazing, trust me. This brings me to mistake number six, getting caught in a bull run. So I remember in 2021, when we were reversing from a big fall from 2020, I was trading a lot, I was making a lot of money. I was like, oh, I'm an amazing trader. I think I was built for this, this and that. But everybody was also winning because wherever you would put your money, you would just make money because it was a bull run, right? All of the markets were up, green, beautiful. And then all of a sudden, boom, that bull run stops, boom, another drop. And I got ca caught in it, over allocated. That's another mistake I'll talk about pretty soon. And I ended up losing a lot of money as well because I was over allocated. I had all my money in the stock market and options and everything. Bull run is when like everything's green, everything's going up, you know, everything like is doing well. And I got caught in it. And when it was over, I was over allocated and then I didn't have time or proper thinking to say, hey, I'm gonna get out of all of my uh, positions here because I think the market is gonna turn red. Uh, and I didn't do that. I thought it was, you know, just starting like that, going down and I'm like, okay, it's gonna keep going up and it never did. It was another big drop, another loss of money. Don't get caught in uh, bull runs as a beginner. Consequently, don't um, over allocate your money over allocating means, let's say you have $1,000 to trade and then you put $990 into one stock and then $10 into another one. You put all your money into one stock or into one market. Say, if you go 70% of all your money into tech uh, and then tech drops, right? Tech is losing, then you're over allocated into tech. You could also be over allocated into one stock, like I said. 
When you do that, you have no diversification. So say while well, you're allocated, over allocated in tech, the health industry could be rising up. Maybe transportation, maybe all of the airlines are going up. Guess what? You have no money to invest in the airlines and you're in a losing trade and you're and everybody's like, oh my God, I'm making so much money, everything's green. And you're like, what do you mean? Like all my stocks are red. Yeah, because you're over allocated. You have no diversity. So you could be, like I said, over allocated in this in a whole market or in a specific stock, it's never good to be over allocated. If you're over allocated in tech, and then tech has one of those like <laughs> moments your money is gone and then you have to wait months for tech to go back up. You don't, you never want to be over allocated. Mistake number eight, very, very important one here. Um, and it would, it would, it would sound simple to like fix or like not to make it, but trust me, this mistake is hard not to make and you have to learn with strategy not to make it. It'll sound very simple, I promise you. Cutting your losses, getting caught in losing trades and not selling. You get dragged down into the deep sea with all of your losses while everyone else is winning. This also ties back into one, over allocating, over exposing yourself, also um, not having an in and out plan because when you don't have an in and out plan, you don't know when you're gonna sell. So let's say your stock is down 10%. Is that you're out? You don't have one. So you just, okay, I'm gonna wait until it goes back up. And you just keep waiting, you keep holding, and it keeps dragging you down, 20%, 70%, 90% down. You're like, damn, I guess I gotta sell now. Boom, you sell at 90% loss because you didn't have an out plan. You didn't tell yourself, if it drops from this line, which is what I do now, I'm out. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if it's a quick bounce up, Boom, I'm out. 10% I'm caught in my losses. 15% I'm caught in my losses. 5% caught in my losses. So holding on to losing stocks all the way to the floor is one of the biggest mistakes all of us have made when we are new traders. This brings me to mistake number nine. And this is gonna sound simple as well. Taking profits. If you don't have an in and out plan and let's say you're up 15%, up 7%, however much you invested. What you could say is, oh, it's actually gonna keep going up. So I'm gonna leave it there because it's gonna keep going up. I'm gonna become a multimillionaire from this. What happens is in aftermarket hours, the thing drops and you're now down 45% when you could have taken profits early and then out and maybe go in again and then out. But when you stay too long because you think you're gonna break the market with that trade, that's when you lose money, when you're not able to get out. Cause he's like, oh my God, you get so excited. I'm gonna make so much money and you don't get out. That's a big problem. You need to get out, you need to have an out plan. So if you do not take profits, this is literally like counterproductive. You're not taking profits, what are you doing? How about this? Why don't you take a little bit of profits from this trade and then a little bit from that one, a little bit from this one. And once you look at your account, oh, all of them uh, added up to a big amount instead of trying to squeeze all of the profits from one trade and then you start losing your money. You gotta take profits early, you gotta have a number. At 20%, I'm taking profits. At this point, I'm taking profits because I believe it's gonna hit a resistance point and from there, it's gonna keep uh, drop down to, I don't know, settle down at a different level. I'm gonna take profits right up there. You need to take profits. So this brings me to the last mistake that we all make and it is looking at comments online, either on Facebook or on whatever platform you use. Uh, some random guy says, buy this stock because it's gonna go to the moon, this and that, and you're, you're getting caught in comments from people uh, promising that something great is gonna happen and you just buy off of that, that's a big mistake. And you should do your own research when buying a stock. You should have, like I said, a purpose, in and out plan, all of that in place before you do a trade and not just buy off of someone, uh, someone's comments online.